looking at uh, Deuteronomy chapter 4. And uh, I think um, this is going to be a very interesting study. What we're going to see is Moses is going to, once again, give some, some uh, retelling of what happened. Now, we try to, uh, try to uh, make sure that we understand each time we're looking at this book that this book basically means Deuteronomy or 2 or, or 2, and it's speaking about the second telling. So, you know, and it's, you know, it's, I find it interesting because there's so many things you can pull from that whole concept of second telling. We see that in, um, uh, in, in Kings and then in Chronicles. We also see it in the Gospels. Uh, but then that whole concept of second, you know, the first coming, the second coming, all of that is just, you know, when you try to put all that together, it's just, it's beautiful and, and, and it's uh, designed. Um, but this second telling that Moses is going to talk about was already uh, uh, talked about uh, again in the book of Jude. A very similar phraseology, very similar words. And so before we go into the study, I'm going to turn to the book of Jude. And I'm just going to read uh, a few uh, verses out of that. It's a beautiful book. And you know, Jude is the, uh, the half-brother of our Lord Jesus Christ. Um, and I just want to take a look at, uh, we're going to start right at the, um, the first verse. And just read right through this. All right, so Jude, starting at the first verse, it says, Jude, the servant of Jesus Christ and the brother of James. To them that are sanctified by God the Father and preserved in Jesus Christ and called. Verse 2. Mercy be unto you and peace and love and uh, be multiplied. Now, I want you to look at that. It's, it's uh, mercy, peace, and love. We're going to see that in Deuteronomy. All right? um, verse 3. Beloved, when I gave all diligence to write unto you of the common salvation... It was needful for me to write unto you and exalt you that you should earnestly contend for the faith which was once delivered unto the saints. That whole concept of earnestly contending for the faith or trying to make sure that you earnestly contend for what God has provided. We're going to see that in Jude 4. Okay, let's keep going though. Look at verse 4. For there are certain men crept in unaware who were before of old ordained to this condemnation. And so they're saying that these are men. They, they look good, but they in their hearts, and God knew them from before, from way back, that they were already set for condemnation. We're going to see that in, in, um, uh, in, in Deuteronomy. And look what it says. Ungodly men turning the grace of God into lasciviousness. We're going to see that. And denying the only Lord God and the Lord Jesus Christ. They're denying. In other words, I don't trust him. I don't believe him. I don't think he can do anything for me. Denying who he is, what he is. Look at five. I will therefore put you in remembrance. Though ye once knew this, how the Lord, having saved the people out of the land of Egypt. That's what we're talking about, right? Afterward, destroy them that believe not. Okay, so those that didn't have any belief and faith in God, why? Because they didn't want to go into the land after they saw the what? The giants. And God said, I was going to deliver them. And they said, no, we don't want to go. All right, let's keep going. Verse 6. But then he also brings in that this wasn't the only time something like this happened. And look what Jude says. And the angels which kept not their first estate, but left their own habitation, he have reserved in everlasting change under darkness unto the judgment of the great day. We see that in Genesis 6, when the angels saw the daughters of men and left and went and dwelt with them. But he's not done. Verse 7, even as Sodom and Gomorrah and the cities about them in like manner, giving themselves over to fornication and going after strange flesh and set forth an example, suffering the vengeance of the eternal fire. All right. Likewise, also these filthy dreamers defiled the flesh, 
despise dominion and speaking evil of dignities. And look what he says. Yet Michael, the archangel, when contending with the devil, disputing about the body of Moses, which we're going to see because Moses is saying, I'm going to die in the wilderness. But, but when, Mo when Moses did die, there was a battle for his body. All right. Does not bring against him a railing accusation, but said, the Lord rebuke thee. And he gives a description of these, and we're just going to read this and then we'll be done. And he says, but these speak evil of those things which they knew not. But what they know naturally as brute beasts, they only are able to satisfy the flesh. And things which they corrupt themselves. Okay? Uh, you know what? I'm going to read the next one as well. Let me just read, the, yeah, let me read 11 as well. Woe unto them, for they have gone in the way of Cain and ran greedily after the era of Balaam, which we're going to see, for reward, and perished in the gainsaying of Korah. All right? And, um, and uh, let me just read uh, 12. <laughs> it's just hard to stop here. And then we're going to stop. These are spots in your feast of charity. They're problems with the grace of God. God's trying to do well, and they come in and try to do, do evil. When they feast with you, that means they're among us. They're in the midst. Feeding themselves without fear, clouds that are without water. Well, clouds, when you see clouds, there's a promise of the, the, the fields getting wet and getting rain, but they don't have any benefit. Uh, without water, carried away of wind, blown by whatever comes along, trees whose fruit withereth. You see a fruit tree? You think you're going to get some fruit? You get nothing. Without fruit, twice dead, plucked up by the roots. All right, let me stop there because I can keep on. This is a great book, a great uh, uh, reading here, uh, Jude. But I wanted you to have that as a flavor for what we're going to see here in Deuteronomy chapter 4. Because we're going to see some of this uh, 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 verbiage and some of this mindset as we go through this chapter. So uh, let's go ahead and get the reading in now. Uh, Deuteronomy chapter 4. Let's take a listen. Chapter 4. Now therefore hearken, O Israel, unto the statutes and unto the judgments which I teach you, for to do them that ye may live and go in and possess the land which the Lord God of your fathers giveth you. Ye shall not add unto the word which I command you, neither shall ye diminish aught from it, that ye may keep the commandments of the Lord your God which I command you. Your eyes have seen what the Lord did because of Baal Peor. For all the men that followed Baal Peor, the Lord thy God hath destroyed them from among you. But ye that did cleave unto the Lord your God are alive every one of you this day. Behold, I have taught you statutes and judgments, even as the Lord my God commanded me, that ye should do so in the land whither ye go to possess it. Keep therefore and do them, for this is your wisdom and your understanding in the sight of the nations, which shall hear all these statutes and say, Surely this great nation is a wise and understanding people. For what nation is there so great, who hath God so nigh unto them? as the Lord our God is in all things that we call upon him for. And what nation is there so great that has statutes and judgments so righteous as all this law, which I set before you this day? Only take heed to thyself, and keep thy soul diligently, lest thou forget the things which thine eyes have seen, and lest they depart from thy heart all the days of thy life. But teach them thy sons, and thy sons' sons, especially the day that thou stoodest before the Lord thy God in Horeb, when the Lord said unto me, Gather me the people together, and I will make them hear my words, that they may learn to fear me all the days that they shall live upon the earth, and that they may teach their children. And ye came near, and stood under the mountain, and the mountain burned with fire unto the midst of heaven, with darkness, clouds, and thick darkness. And the Lord spake unto you out of the midst of the fire. Ye heard the voice 
of the words, but saw no similitude, only ye heard a voice. And he declared unto you his covenant, which he commanded you to perform, even ten commandments, and he wrote them upon two tables of stone. And the Lord commanded me at that time to teach you statutes and judgments, that ye might do them in the land whither ye go over to possess it. Take ye therefore good heed unto yourselves, for ye saw no manner of similitude on the day that the Lord spake unto you in Horeb out of the midst of the fire. Lest ye corrupt yourselves, and make you a graven image, the similitude of any figure, the likeness of male or female, the likeness of any beast that is on the earth, the likeness of any winged fowl that flieth in the air, the likeness of anything that creepeth on the ground, the likeness of any fish that is in the waters beneath the earth. And lest thou lift up thine eyes unto heaven, and when thou seest the sun, and the moon, and the stars, even all the host of heaven, shouldest be driven to worship them and serve them, which the Lord thy God hath divided unto all nations under the whole heaven. But the Lord hath taken you and brought you forth out of the iron furnace, even out of Egypt, to be unto him a people of inheritance, as ye are this day. Furthermore, the Lord was angry with me for your sakes, and swear that I should not go over Jordan, and that I should not go in unto that good land which the Lord thy God giveth thee for an inheritance. But I must die in this land. I must not go over Jordan, but ye shall go over and possess that good land. Take heed unto yourselves, lest ye forget the covenant of the Lord your God, which he made with you, and make you a graven image, or the likeness of anything which the Lord thy God hath forbidden thee. The Lord thy God is a consuming fire, even a jealous God. When thou shalt beget children, and children's children, and ye shall have remained long in the land, and shall corrupt yourselves, and make a graven image, or the likeness of anything, and shall do evil in the sight of the Lord thy God, to provoke him to anger. I call heaven and earth to witness against you this day, that ye shall soon utterly perish from off the land whereunto ye go over Jordan to possess it. Ye shall not prolong your days upon it, but shall utterly be destroyed. And the Lord shall scatter you among the nations, and ye shall be left few in number among the heathen, whither the Lord shall lead you. And there ye shall serve gods, the work of men's hands, wood and stone, which neither see nor hear nor eat nor smell. But if from thence thou shalt seek the Lord thy God, thou shalt find him, if thou seek him with all thy heart and with all thy soul. When thou art in tribulation, and all these things are come upon thee, even in the latter days, if thou turn to the Lord thy God, and shalt be obedient unto his voice, the Lord thy God is a merciful God. He will not forsake thee, neither destroy thee, nor forget the covenant of thy fathers which he swear unto them. For ask now the days that are past which were before thee, since the day that God created man upon the earth, and ask from the one side of heaven unto the other whether there hath been any such thing as this great thing is, or hath been heard like it. Did ever people hear the voice of God speaking out of the midst of the fire, as thou hast heard, and live? Or hath God a save to go and take him a nation from the midst of another nation, by temptations, by signs, and by wonders, and by war, and by a mighty hand, and by a stretched out arm, and by great terrors, according to all that the Lord your God did for you in Egypt before your eyes? Unto thee it was shew that thou mightest know that the Lord, he is God. There is none else beside him. Out of heaven he made thee to hear his voice, that he might instruct thee. And upon earth he shewed thee his great fire, and thou heardest his words out of the midst of the fire. And because he loved thy fathers, therefore he chose their seed after them, and brought thee out in his sight with his mighty power out of Egypt, to drive out nations from before thee greater and mightier than thou art to bring thee in, to give thee their land for an inheritance, as it is this day. Know therefore this day, and consider it in thine heart, that the Lord, he is God in heaven, above and upon the earth beneath, there is none else. 
Thou shalt keep therefore his statutes and his commandments, which I command thee this day, that it may go well with thee and with thy children after thee, and that thou mayest prolong thy days upon the earth, which the Lord thy God giveth thee forever. Then Moses severed three cities on this side Jordan toward the sun rising, that the slayer might flee thither, which should kill his neighbor unawares, and hated him not in times past, and that fleeing unto one of these cities he might live, namely Bezer in the wilderness, in the plain country of the Reubenites, and Ramoth in Gilead of the Gadites, and Golan in Bashan of the Manassites. And this is the law which Moses set before the children of Israel. These are the testimonies and the statutes and the judgments which Moses spake unto the children of Israel after they came forth out of Egypt. On this side Jordan, in the valley over against Beth Peor, in the land of Sihon, king of the Amorites, who dwelt in Heshbon, whom Moses and the children of Israel smote after they were come forth out of Egypt. And they possessed his land, and the land of Og, king of Bashan, two kings of the Amorites, which were on this side Jordan toward the sun rising, from Aroer, which is by the bank of the river Arnon, even unto Mount Sihon, which is Hermon, and all the plain on this side Jordan eastward, even unto the sea of the plain, unto the springs of Pisgah. All right, there we go. Wow, a lot in that, and uh, I tell you, this book of Deuteronomy is such a, um, a, a wonderful book in encouraging us to believe and trust in the Lord. This writing that Moses is writing and this speech that he is giving to the children of Israel, he's giving that to them to encourage them to hold on and trust God. These words translate even to our day today in the year 2022. It's still relevant. We should still do exactly what Moses mentioned here. We do have to keep in mind, though, that there are always going to be obstacles. There are always going to be ups and downs. But that's why we're going to seek this word. Hearken, seek, diligent. These are phrases that we're going to try to uh, bring out and, and um, explain how we today can put that into active work to develop our confidence and our trust in God. Because the world is going to bring stuff with the attempt to discourage, to confuse, to make you weary and tired. Right? That's what this world is designed to do. It's because it's designed by the enemy. He is the, uh, the prince and the power of the air. God made it and, this, and Satan has uh, um, uh, taken and, and has uh, uh, gained authority when he didn't have authority. But Jesus has taken it back. And just like how King David was anointed king and he was king in the eyes of God, but yet Saul still sat on the throne. And that's how this world is. This world belongs to our God. And the Lord Jesus has gotten victory, but he's still allowing Satan to, to operate and to act. So we are in the world purchased and given to us by Jesus. But the devil is still occupying and sitting in his seat of authority for now. All right. Now, with that in mind, let's take a look at this. It says, now, therefore, and this is uh, the Lord, uh, 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 this is uh, Moses speaking as the Lord had given to him. And he's telling the people to, now, therefore, hearken. And that word hearken means listen, pay attention. Right? You know, don't just hear, but understand. Hearken. O Israel, unto the statutes and the judgments. All right, so what is that? what God has given. That's what we're doing now. We're looking at God's word, his statutes and his judgments. And we're hearkening because we're trying to understand it. That automatically gives you a blessing. It automatically lets uh, your spirit and the spirit of, 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 of all the people that, that love God know that's what I want. I want God. God already knows it, but God wants you to understand that you can come and gain uh, insight, you can gain understanding, you can gain wisdom for life if you hearken to his statutes and to his judgments. Why do you need insight? Why do you need wisdom? Why do you need to understand? 
because you're going to have things in life that will cause you to struggle, to have the opportunity to doubt, to have opportunity to get weak, to have the opportunity to find uh, uh, situations where you're wondering, well, where is God? And if you don't think that's going to happen, just keep leave, living. You're going to experience those moments. But God knows it. So that's why he gives us these statutes and these judgments to follow by. All right? Let's keep going. He goes, he goes which I teach you for to do them. And ye shall uh, may, may live and go in and possess the land. In other words, you're going to possess what God has promised. There is something and things that God has promised for you. And a lot of times you might think, well, I'm not going to get anything. I don't have anything, you know. No, whatever it is that God has for you. And sometimes you may have already gained it. And if you gained it, then you got to maintain it. Okay, and that's an important part of the work of God too. Sometimes we say, well, I want to get what God has for me. And that's fine. But then when you get it, don't be like, okay, I'm good now. I'm good. No, because now you got to do what? You got to maintain it. I don't know if you ever played as a kid uh, that, that game, uh, King of the Hill. You, you find like a little hilly grass area and, and you, you, you try to stay up there and everybody to come up, you try to push them and roll them down the hill. All right? But you know, just because you got to the top of the, the hill didn't mean that you could stay there because everybody else was trying to come up as well. Well, it's, it's like that in, in our battle and our walk with the Lord is that we're going to have to strive to gain the promises, but then we also have to fight to maintain. So we're fighting to gain and we're fighting to maintain. Okay, let's keep going. Verse 2. Ye shall not add uh, unto the word which I command you. Now, this is important. We see this also in the book of Revelation. But the key is, don't try to improve it. I'm going to give you a recipe. Don't add to the recipe. All right? And that's the problem that a lot of times we have. We figure, well, I'm going to do more. And that's what, if we look back in Genesis, that's what it looks like Eve was trying to do. Because God told, him not, told them not to eat of the fruit. And she said, God told us not to eat nor touch it. And I guess her mindset could have been, well, if I don't touch it, I won't eat it. But that wasn't what God said. And so when you alter the, the commandments or the structure or the, or the insight that God gives, it can then bring additional hardship or struggle that God did not intend for you to go through. All right? And so he says, don't add uh, unto the word which I command you, neither shall you diminish. Don't say, well, I don't need this. You know, God told us to get up and seek him. I don't need to do that. I, I, I seek them last year, and, and I, sleep, I already prayed the, the beginning of this year, and God knows. No, he told us to go ahead and do it. And because he has called us to do it, we should be willing to acknowledge that no matter how insignificant it seems, that is what God has instructed us to do. Okay? Uh, good to see you, Paula. We're in uh, Deuteronomy chapter 4, uh, going on to the uh, third verse. All right, so in that second verse, don't diminish, don't add, and don't diminish. Why? Because God's word is perfect. And that's why we end up with so many different um, uh, religions. Because somebody says, well, I'm going to add this to it. I'm going to add that to it. And, and then you end up with all these different types of uh, uh, schisms that you got to do in addition. We need to learn to stop doing that. Just follow God's word, and it will work. Let's keep going. Verse, verse 3. Your eyes have seen what the Lord did because of Baal Peor uh, and for the men that follow uh, Baal Peor, the Lord thy God hath destroyed them amongst you. All right. That's why I had you go. One of the reasons, it's going to be several, that I had you, we went to the book of Jude first because I wanted to, to show the connection between the book of Jude and what uh, Moses is speaking here. Jude, the brother of Jesus, uh, is trying to encourage. Look, I wanted to write about common salvation, but I had to give you a warning first. And that's what Moses is doing here too. He says, look, I, I, I know y'all going into this promised land, but let me give you this warning first. And he gives them an example. He has them look back. Do you guys remember 
when we dealt with Balaam, and Balaam was sent forth as a spiritual individual who attempted to curse God. He was a false prophet, but he was spiritual. And that's the thing you got to keep in mind. There are a lot of people that are spiritual. They're religious, but they're not God's man or they're not God's woman or they're not God's uh, 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 community or whatever it may be caught. It may be. And Balaam was an example of that. And so, yep, he went out and tried to do stuff. But yet God turned what Balaam said into an actual blessing. But Balaam was not doing it for his heart. Now, we saw in Jude, Jude told us why Balaam was doing it. He was doing it because he was seeking after the what? After the money. And it was very clear. It was all about finance, all about getting the cash. And that's what Balaam was all about. And that's why Jude pointed that out. And then, of course, he talked about uh, the gang saying of Korah and so forth. Um, okay, we're gonna, we'll, we'll get to that in a minute. We'll, we'll talk to that. I see Paula has sent us a message, and we'll look at that message uh, once we're done. All right. Um, so, we see here that he's saying there was a problem uh, with the children of Israel when they were dealing with Balaam. And he says, don't forget it. Now, what does that mean? Don't forget how we made mistakes. All right? Don't just overlook the fact that you made a mistake or you went wrong. Learn from it. Look at verse 4. But he did not cleave unto the Lord, your God, uh, are, 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 are alive. All right? So all those people that did not cleave unto the Lord, your God, uh, I'm sorry, all those people that did cleave to the Lord your God are alive. Okay? So, those that did not listen to Balaam, did not do what, what Balaam said. Now, you say, well, what did Balaam do? Well, let me remind you. Remember, he tried to curse Israel, and he couldn't. So, he went back to King Balak, and he said, listen, I can't curse him, but I can tell you how you can get the children of Israel to curse themselves. You take your women and you bring them out and have them parade themselves all licentious-like in front of the men, and the men will lust after them, go after them, marry them. The women will teach them how to serve other gods, and then God will be uh, upset, and then that will bring uh, the dissatisfaction of God upon the people, and that's what happened. So Balaam taught uh, uh, Balak, how to bring corruption into. And that's why the book of Jude said there were certain men crept in unawares. They seem spiritual and seem to be uh, people that have a mindset, but there are individuals that all they are looking for is the things that they can gain from it. It's all about getting. And so they use God as a tool for benefit and not as some not as a god to worship and that's an important concept all right um verse five it says behold i have taught you statutes and judgments even as the lord your uh, lord my god commanded me so moses saying i've given you what god gave me okay um and then he says that ye should do so in the land whither you go to possess. Now, what does that mean? When you begin to obtain those things which God has promised to you, make sure that you hold on to the statutes of God. Okay? And it's important to keep in mind that uh, the statutes of God are not put forth to put us in some kind of regiment or in some kind of situation where we can't do. They're there for our own protection. Example, when you're walking uh, on one of those uh, uh, bridge walks across the, uh, across the Hudson, and they have those what? Those rails. And those rails are there not to just make you feel like you're in jail, but those rails are there for your what? For your protection. Okay, and so that's what God is saying. There's certain things I don't want you to do. And he's going to list a few things here in just a minute. I don't want you to go in that direction. And that's what the rails do. They help you not to go into a direction 
if you if you walk across that bridge and you walk in the wrong direction and the rails are not there, you will fall off the bridge and fall into the Hudson. So the rails are there for your own protection. Well, God has given us some guardrails. And we're going to take a look at this. Look what it says. Verse 6. It says, keep therefore and do them for this is your wisdom and your understanding. There is no ability to have the, uh, uh, the wisdom that God can produce and give and share without God. You see, there are always things that men will do that they think are good. The scripture says there is a, there's a way that seemeth right unto a man, but the end thereof are the ways of death. So he says, keep this because you're going to have wisdom and you're going to have understanding in the sight of the nation. So the other nations will see you don't do things like them. You do things out of the wisdom and out of the understanding that God gives. All right. All right. And it says all these statutes, I say, and, and all these statutes and, and, and say, surely this great nation is a wise and understanding people. Now, when you begin to do the things that are in Scripture, you will find that ultimately, maybe not in the beginning, but ultimately people will look back and say, you know what, you did it very godly. You were very wise. You understood what the Lord wanted you to do. Now, um, will everybody always do this? Of course not. And Moses is going to point that out. And God knows this. That's why we need Jesus. You see, all this stuff that Moses is saying about them keeping all this stuff and keeping the laws, the, God knows we're going to fail. That's why we can't be saved by works. We can't take the law of God and say, look what I've done and I'm good. So now I can present myself to God out of my own righteousness. We can't do that. Jesus explained that to us when the rich young ruler came to him. And he said, Master, what shall I do to be saved? And he said, well, what is written? And he would begin to label, out, you know, love the Lord thy God. And he went forth and labeled a whole bunch of different things which were accurate. And Jesus told him, you have, you have said well. And then he said, what else must I do? And then he said, love your neighbor as yourself. And then uh, he told the, uh, the rich young ruler, he said, take what you have, your riches, Go and sell it, give it to the poor, and come follow me. Now, the man couldn't do it. The Bible says he walked away, what? Sad. Why? Because he doesn't trust Jesus like that. I'm going to give away all that I got. Now, when you think about it, he, imagine, you know, bring it in today's terms. Go take all your savings, your, your, your savings account, your checking account, and your 401k, and your Social Security money, and give it to the poor. And just follow Jesus. Now, that, that takes faith. But here's the thing. If the Lord told you to do it, he would guarantee your success in doing it. Just like when God told them, go into the land and I will fight for you. And they walked in there and saw giants, men stronger than them, which we're going to see here in a minute. And they said, we can't defeat these people. They ended up failing not because they were weak. They ended up failing because they didn't have faith in God. All right. So let's keep going here. So in uh, verse 6, we see that he says, uh, the nations will get, you, will get to see the understanding and the wisdom that God gives you. Look at verse 7. It says, for what nation is there so great whom have God so nigh unto them? Is there anybody that God has brought so close unto them as Israel? No. Look what he says. He keeps going. As the Lord your God uh, is in all these things that we call upon him for. Look at that. God is so nigh that we can do what? We can call to him. We can go to him. Now, in the writing of this during the time of the, of the Israel, is, uh, Israeli nation, everybody was trying to find a God they could communicate with. That's why there were so many false gods. That's why when God brought them out of Egypt, 
he had to first do those miracles, and each one of those was a a, a, a knock on all of the false gods that were developed and worshipped in Egypt. Well, it isn't just Egypt where people have false gods. And the people of Israel, when they go into the promised land, are going to see other things that people worship. But why would you want to serve those when you have a God that you can talk to yourself? But he goes on. He's going to elaborate on this. Let's look verse 8. And what nation is, the, is uh, there so great that have statutes and judgments so right, God has given you things that you have seen will produce life? Because you walk 40 years in the wilderness and those statutes and those judgments help bring you to the place where you are today. Okay? Uh, so he talks about those righteous uh, 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 laws that they have. Look at verse 9. Only take heed to yourself and keep your soul diligently lest ye forget. And there is the problem. Okay? What is that? We forget. You know, when they crossed the Jordan, God going to tell uh, Joshua to take stones and put them up as a memorial. Why? Because you're going to forget. And I think it's a wonderful spiritual exercise to just think about. Go back in your past and think about the things that God has done for you that you know this was God. And you need to produce your own stones of monument to help encourage you when you get discouraged, when you feel like, I don't, I don't know what I'm doing, that you know God can walk with you in the midst of difficulty. All right? So you can't, we can't forget what God has done. If we forget, then the moment we come across another uh, uh, obstacle or hurdle that is too big for us, we're going to be like, well, I don't know if I can get over it. Wait a minute. You had hurdles like that in the past, and God brought you through. You think he's going to bring you through? And so when we read this and we look at and we see all the miracles that God did for the children of Israel while they were in Egypt, and we wonder, if they can see, if they saw all that stuff that God did, why are they getting all discouraged in the wilderness? But then let's apply it to us. We get a problem tomorrow. We wake up, and mm, there's a big old issue. And we're like, oh my goodness, oh my goodness, what am I going to do? What am I going to do? And can we do what we think that the children of Israel should have done? And remember, can we remember how God brought us out? Like we try to say, well, they should have remembered how God brought them out. And how he brought them to the wilderness. And how he fed them with manna. And how their shoes didn't wear out after 40 years. And how they, they were able to, to, keep, to, to fight uh, uh, King Og. Uh, of Bashan, which we're going to see in a little bit if I get to it. I'm, I might not have to make this a two-parter. And, 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 and go through. And God delivered them. So, now, when you get into another issue, you're going to forget about God and start worrying and, 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 and not, not... Now, when you get into the issues, I'm not saying that you don't cry to God. But you go to who? You go to God. You, you bring to God the issue. You bring to Him the problem. And you watch God deliver. All right, lest ye forget the things which thine eyes have seen, and lest uh, they depart from thy heart. Man, see, you don't, even, you don't even remember it in your mind, but you don't feel it in the heart. I know what God can do. And therein is a lot of victory. When you say, I know what God can do. You know, that's what Stevens was able to say. Look, you know, I know God can, 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 uh, can do things. And he was able to st stand there and talk. Uh, you know, there's so many different people. We could go through all these different Bible characters. Uh, but when you know what God can do, all right, it says, but teach them thy sons and thy son's sons. So now he's saying, not only do you need to remember it, but you also got to tell your children and your children's children. All right, this isn't the last time he's going to mention that. Let's keep going. Verse 10. Um, Especially the days that you stood before the Lord, thy God, in, uh, in Horeb, when the Lord said unto me, gather me the people together. Now he's trying to, he's get, Moses is giving them 
uh, things to remember. Here's something you should put in your memory bank. Here's some trophies that you should put on the shelf of what God did to give you the victory to help you come in first place. Make sure you have these trophies on the, on the mantle of what God has said. And he says, um, and I will make uh, them hear my voice. So he says, I gathered them in, in, in Horab, gathered the people together, and I allowed them to hear me. Imagine that. God saying, I will allow you to hear me. And he let them hear the voice. And they uh, may learn to fear me all the days that they live upon the earth. And that they may teach their children. Okay, so why are you getting this? So that you can help the next generation. Okay, verse 11. And ye kept near, and you came near, and stood under the mountain. And the mountain burned. With fire. So you saw this, right? Unto the midst of heaven with dark clouds and thick darkness. Do you remember that? This is what God did to help you to know who he is. That he is the God of gods. Not, now this is after he already did all, all the miracles in Egypt. Here's another one. To try to get you to remember and not forget. Look at verse 12. And the Lord spake unto you in the midst of the fire. Ye heard the voice of the words, but saw no similitude. Now look at that. You heard God speaking, but you didn't, he, you didn't see him. You didn't see anything that looked like a God, but you heard the voice of God. Look at that. Only you heard a voice. All right? And so that's an important thing. He said, now remember that. All right? But we're going to get back to this in a minute. Look at verse 13. And he declared unto you his covenant. He told you what he had told me and the things he had written in the, in the, on, on the tablet. So now you had the tablet. You had the man of God, Moses, telling you. But then you also what? Heard it yourself. That's what Job said. I've heard of many times people talk, talking about God with the hearing of the ear. But now I know God what? For myself. When God came to Job and showed Job why he had to go through what he went through. All right. And he declared unto you his covenant. This is verse 13, which he commanded you to perform. Now, this is a command to do. Now, keeping in mind, command you to perform even 10 commandments. And he wrote them upon two tables of stone. All right. Now. If you keep all of God's commandments, guess what? You can be saved if you never sin. But you already start with two strikes because you're born in sin, shaped in iniquity. So therefore, that's two strikes. And the, the minute you do anything, you, you already struck, struck out. So nobody is going to be able to take the, the commandments and present them to God and say, I've done it. Like we already talked about, that rich young ruler that tried to do it, and he couldn't. But... Jesus did. And that's why the law is so important. The law is not useless. The law is not irrelevant. The law is important because we are in a connective form saved by the law. Well, what do you mean by that? The law produces the, the, the avenue and the right for redemption. And we couldn't do it, but Jesus did. So by the law, Jesus purchased salvation. Because of his sinless life. But then, because of his uh, uh, ability to do it and still die. You're only supposed to die if you what? Have sin. But he died because he did this on the cross. He did what? He took on our sin and became sin for us. But because he personally, being God, could not sin, death couldn't hold him. But then, because he took all of our sin, when he died, guess what he can do? He can exchange our sin for his righteousness. And that's why we're saved. Through the law that Jesus fulfilled, he fulfilled all the law and all the prophets, and then offered up his righteousness to us. And we can go before God. Why? Because Jesus said on the Sermon on the Mount, be ye perfect as your heavenly Father is perfect. And you go, well, who, who can do that? Well, you can if you have the righteousness of Christ. If you don't have the righteousness of Christ, then you can't. 
And that's the only way you can present yourself to God because you have to come to God without a spot and without a wrinkle and without a blemish. And you can't do that if you come on your own efforts. That's why we need Jesus. And nobody is going to see God unless they go through Jesus. Jesus said himself, no man can go to the Father except by through me. And that's an important concept. All right. So he says, I've given you these things on these two tape, uh, tablets of stone. Look at verse 14. And the Lord commanded me at that time to teach you statutes and judgments that ye may do them in the land whither you go over to possess it. So now he's letting you know, you're going to go over to this land and you're going to possess it. Okay. But you're going to have to go with the same strength and wisdom and trust uh, that will that uh, allows you to possess it. Don't go into the land and then forget God. Bring God with you. See, sometimes we get blessed and we get things and we jump into the blessings of God and we leave God behind. Always bring the Lord with you. Let him go before you. Let him lead you and guide you into whatever uh, 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 avenue that he opens up for you. It's an important walk trait that we should have. We should bring, the, what's, what's that song? Bring the Lord with you everywhere you go. And that's a very uh, important uh, concept to have. Let's keep going. Verse 15. Take ye therefore good heed unto yourself, for ye saw no manner of similitude on the day that the Lord spake unto you in, he, in, in, in Horab out of the midst of the fire. Now, why is he saying this? He's saying <laughs> this is important. Because remember when we first started this chapter and the chapter said, don't add to and don't diminish, right? Well, Moses is saying this by the Spirit of God because he knows what's going to happen. People are going to say, I want to trust and I want to follow God. But to help me to do this, I'm going to make a statue and I'm going to bow down to the statue. And I'm going to say, this is my God. This is, and God is saying, no, don't do that. Don't make any similitudes. Have God where? In your heart. In your remembrance. Remember what God has done. Have in your heart the understanding that God can bring you through. Let the Lord live in you. Don't try to make any statues outside of you that you can say, well, this is my God. Now, why do we do that? We do that because we want to walk by sight. We want to see things. But Paul and many uh, uh, writers have already told us that we should walk by faith and not by sight. But because we are natural beings and all of the things that we do it's so easy to just flip the switch and go, well, I'm going to serve God, but I'm going to serve him this way. And then we, we make a, 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 a means of, of serving God that God did not ordain. Let's take a look at this. We're probably going to have to stop after this portion because I don't think we're going to get through the rest of it. Because I don't want to really rush. But he says, uh, look at 15. He says, take ye therefore good heed now, now, pay close attention to this. Unto yourself, for ye saw no similitude in the day that the Lord spake unto you in Horab on the, uh, in the midst of the fire. Look at 16. Lest ye corrupt yourselves and make you a graven image, the similitude of any figure, the likeness of male or female, 17, the likeness of any beast. Remember when they came out of Egypt, what did, what did the people end up doing? When they couldn't see Moses anymore and he was up in the mountain, they wanted something that they could what? See. And they made that what? That golden calf. That's in us to this day. We have to make sure that we don't allow it to get to the point where we, I have to see it. I, well, I can't be blessed unless I can see certain things. I, I need to be able to touch it. Walk by faith. But let's keep going. Uh, uh, 17, the likeness of any beast that is upon the earth, the likeness of any winged fowl, 
uh, that flyeth in the air. 18, the likeness of anything that creepeth upon the ground and the likeness of any fish that is in the waters beneath the earth. 19, and lest thou lift up thy eyes unto heaven and when thou seest the sun and the moon and the stars, even all the hosts of heaven should be driven to worship them. You see that? Why? When you look up, look what it says. And when thou seest the sun. What does that mean? I, I see something that is great. And people will say, well, I'm worshiping the creation of God. And I, I get what they're trying to say. God is so magnificent. God is so wonderful. And what God is telling you, he's saying, don't do it. Because that will lead to ultimate corruption. Well, you will no longer be following God by faith. You will only be able to follow God if you can see it. And God's trying to get us to learn how to have faith. Why? Simple. The scripture tells us, without faith, it is impossible to please God. And I always try to make sure that we understand that. Because it didn't say without faith, it's difficult to please God. Or that it's a struggle to please God. Or that it may have some hard times in trying to please God. It says it's impossible. Because you have to believe that he is. And that he is a rewarder to them that diligently seek him. Okay? All right. Now, I'm going to stop here. And um, uh, we're going to uh, make a mark here. Uh, we'll, we'll pick this up, Lord willing, on next week. Uh, and uh, and we'll go uh, 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 try to finish this out. But we do got a couple of questions that uh, have been brought up. And I want to go ahead and uh, address those.